Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Roundup. The top stories in data science this week center around how AI can help us better understand babies and whether or not humans working with AI can perform better than just AI by itself. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel so that you never miss an update to the latest and greatest in data science. In our first story this week, a drone using advanced computer vision AI has managed to beat the world's best drone pilots in a race. Last year, autonomous racing drones from the University of Zurich made headlines when they proved they could beat Thomas Bietmata, two-time winner of the multi-GP International World Cup of Drone Racing. In spite of this feat, the drones had what many called an unfair advantage, given that they were using a motion capture system to capture real-time position information and feed this into the drone's navigation system. This time, however, the drone was only allowed to use onboard computer vision systems and had access to the same information as the drone pilot practice on the course, and a live video feed. Three world-class human pilots were invited to Zurich for this race. Along with Thomas Bittmata, the University of Zurich hosted Alex Vanover and Martin Schaper, both world-class drone pilots with various competitive titles. With a top speed of 80 km an hour, the vision-based autonomous drone outraced the fastest human by 0.5 seconds during the three-lap race. For context, the usual difference between first and second in these races is one or two tenths of a second. With more details about the race to be published soon, the AI team is excited about what this result means for both drone racing as a sport and the possibilities of computer vision when applied to a less controllable environment than a racetrack. While AI might be definitively better than humans when it comes to drone racing, new data is showing that two is better than one when humans and AI team up to catch life-threatening conditions like breast cancer. A large-scale study published this month in the Lancet Digital Health is the first of its kind to directly compare an AI's performance in breast cancer screening according to whether it's used alone or to assist a human expert. The study determined that AI alone performed worse than a radiologist, but when AI referred cases that it was unsure about to the radiologist, the combined team of AI and the doctor was 2.6% better at detecting breast cancer than a doctor working alone, and raised fewer false alarms. Curtis Langlotz, director of Stanford Center for Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Imaging, says we often say that AI will not replace radiologists. This study doesn't change that, but in the proposed AI-driven process, nearly three quarters of the screening studies didn't need to be reviewed by a radiologist, while improving accuracy overall. That is groundbreaking. What do you think? Should we be looking forward to a future in which AI helps us, or scared of a future in which it replaces us? Let us know in the comments. Our next story takes a look at the first step towards introducing neural networks into our understanding of how babies learn. DeepMind has developed a neural network that's trained to understand basic properties of objects and then reacts with surprise when a scenario differs from its expectations. This is designed to mirror the way developmental psychologists test how babies understand the motion of objects by tracking their gaze. When shown a video of, for example, a ball that suddenly disappears, the children express surprise, which researchers quantify by measuring how long the children stare in a particular direction. The software model, named Physics Learning Through Autoencoding and Tracking Objects, or more simply PLATO, was trained with videos showing simple mechanisms such as a ball rolling down a slope, or two balls bouncing off each other. The model developed the ability to predict how those objects would behave in different situations, and then developed a measure of surprise by comparing its expectations to video footage showing impossible events such as something disappearing. While Plato isn't designed as a model of infant behavior, the decision to bring AI into the mix when studying how human babies learn is an important step in the research field. The team behind the model have expressed that they hope improved versions of Plato could eventually be used by cognitive scientists to seriously model the behavior of infants. Our final story this week covers findings from a team led by Harvard University postdoctoral fellow Courtney Hilton that show that the way we talk to babies transcends language, cultural, and geographical barriers. The research teams involved 40 international collaborators and collected over 1,600 recordings of human speech and song from 21 societies across six continents. Applying lasso and mixed effects regression models, the researchers were able to classify whether recordings were infant or adult directed on the basis of their acoustic features. They found that acoustic features consistently differed between infant and adult directed recordings. In both groups, Infant-directed recordings had purer and less harsh vocal timbres, more vowel sounds, and higher-pitched speech. 
The researchers argue that the findings show that despite variation in language, music, and infant care practices worldwide, when people speak to an infant or sing to an upset baby, they change the way that they speak and sing in similar and mutually intelligible ways across cultures. That's all for this week's roundup. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the news this week, and we can't wait to see you next week. Have a great one.